What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. Today we're going to be doing a video comparing the OBS 7.3 to the 12 valve Cummins. In today's video we're going to be comparing the 12 valve Cummins to the 7.3 Power Stroke. And I get a lot of people asking, what's the better truck? Is it the 7.3 Power Stroke or is it the 12 valve Cummins and why? And although both of these trucks are very nice pickup trucks, they're both going to serve you very well for the most part. They're both going to be pretty darn reliable. A lot of people want to know, what do you prefer and why? And I'm going to give you my reason as to what I pick and desire the most and why. And the answer is going to change based on what you're looking for and what you want. So, you know, um, we're going to get into the details and all the information on what I know about these trucks and what I like to compare. And then you guys can make the final decision in the comments below on what you guys think is a better buy and why. But I'm going to go through my preferences and desires with a pickup truck and what I look for. Now, I'm not going to lie, I might be a little bit biased towards the 7.3 due to it being our current giveaway truck that you can win at L. But I'm gonna try to keep this as fair and even as possible. We made it over here to my dad's barn where he has the nasty red 12 valve Cummins here parked. The truck's not been driven very much in a while. This truck also has a pusher compound turbo kit, which we'll show you guys in a little bit here. It's a 96 12 valve, 149,000 miles on it. We bought the truck actually on the side of the road for 5,500 bucks. So what I'm gonna go into is the things I look for when it comes to uh, deciding on what truck I prefer and why. Now, there's a lot of people that are gonna have opinions on this, okay? Pen opinions are free, everybody hands them out, and that's why there's so many of them. This is just an opinion as well, so take it for what it is. The top three things that I look at when it comes to determining what truck I would buy and what truck I suggest and why. And there's a few things that you need to think about, and the number one thing is maintenance and ease of use. Now, when it comes to maintenance and ease of use, both of these trucks are very, very different. So people ask, you know, oh, well, what's the better truck, the 7.3 or the 12 valve? And I'm like, you know, it really just comes down to preference because for me personally, I look at this truck under the hood and I go, wow, that is the truck I'd want to work on if I have to choose one in terms of ease of use and what I want to work on. And then you've got guys that grew up around these and they were always working on theirs or their dads or their grandpas and so they know everything about these inside and out. Then when it comes to these, they have no clue, you know, they can figure it out, but they have no clue, you know, how it all goes because they're so used to this. And then vice versa, you got guys that grew up working on these and then they think it's the easiest thing in the world and then they have no freaking clue what they're doing on this, but it's a lot easier to go from working on one of these to those versus going from working on one of those to one of these. And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna go over here to the 12 valve. I'm gonna pop the hood here and let you guys take a little look under here. And I think it, actually this truck has 153,000 miles on it. I'm getting up there in mileage, I see. So under the hood of the trusty 12 valve comments here. This one is slightly modified, so it's not gonna look exactly like most of your guys' trucks will look like if you're looking at one of these stock and looking to buy one. You've got the fuel lines coming out of the P-pump here, your fuel pump, your mechanical injection fuel pump. This one has a twin intake on it, which is not stock. You'll normally just have the one going into the cylinder three there. And then you've usually just got one small turbo coming right off the manifold, not an HX35 and a big, I think it's an S475. You know, this one's got some stuff done to it, but your valve covers to get to your push rods, to get to your rocker pedestals, to get to your, uh, to do your valve lash, all that stuff. It's just right here down the middle, right on top. You know, so if you've got a creeper you're working on, all that stuff is right on top. Injectors are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six right down the top side, not down in on the side, down it at an angle. I mean, just right along the top. Fuel lines come off super easy. Intake comes off super easy. This stuff is super, super simple. Nothing is very complicated. Everything's easy to get to. And so that's what I mean by preferring this truck when it comes to ease of use. That's just my preference. But if you look at even a stock one, it's way more wide open than this one is. This one's got a lot of stuff crammed under the hood compared to your typical stock 12 valve. Your typical stock 12 valve is just your straight six cylinders down the middle, and that's just a little HX35 turbo and an intake, and that's pretty much it, other than your two batteries and wiring stuff. But I mean, 
just not a lot to them. Very simple to get to everything. Let's come over to the Ford. So looking under the hood of the Ford here, you've got a lot more going on. To get to your injectors, they're actually under the valve covers here on the side of the engine. So you've got your four injectors on this side four injectors on that side. A little more of a pain in the butt to deal with. Turbo on these older trucks, it's still not that hard to get out. It's just sitting right back there on top. That's what that is right there. I mean, most of your service parts are still fairly easy. You get your intake, your batteries, your alternator, and all that stuff is all fairly easy to get to. But for the most part, when you look at this truck side by side compared to that one, a lot more going on under the hood. It is what it is if it's reliable, you know, it's no big deal, you know, it's not like you're going to be messing with everything all the time anyway. But, let's get into a couple of the other things that are associated with ease of maintenance and cost of maintenance. So actually, when it comes to the 12 valve Cummins, a set of injectors on this truck for a stock set, not the set we have in it, but if you were to put a stock replacement set in this truck, let's say you get at, let's say you're at 250,000 miles, it needs a new set of injectors, which, which isn't like exact mileage of when you're gonna have to do injectors on these. They, it's just all random, all different mileage, it just depends on maintenance of the truck, how hard you drive it, too many different things that determine how long your injectors will last. But let's just say you gotta replace them. A set of injectors, a stock set on this truck would cost you about $250. And that's if you're going with just a remanufactured, boring, plain, stock set. You just want the thing to stay reliable, keep it running, take out the ones that are acted up and giving you issues, put a new set in, 250 bucks, so it's pretty darn reasonable. When it comes to the heating element of this truck, and I'm talking about the grid heater, the grid heater on this truck only costs about $130, so let's say a grid heater goes out, and that's pretty much what these use to start in the winter is just your grid heater to get the air hot it's just right on top of the engine bay and it's 130 bucks and it's super simple probably would take you about 10 minutes to install and that's it and one more look here you got your injectors are just right here and if you want to see injector installs on my channel i've got lots of those videos on there and then your grid heater is just right here so you just pop these four bolts off there and of course on this one we have four bolts here and four bolts over there but ordinarily you just have the one intake you take those four bolts off there disconnect these cables undo that one band clamp rotate it out of the way pull your grid heater off put your new one on bolt it back in and it's that simple. Now coming back over here to the Ford, your set of injectors for a stock set. This is just some stuff that I found on a website when I was looking for where I normally buy my truck parts. I just looked up Paul Bob Cummins injectors, stock set, price I got for that one. And this, I just, same thing. I looked up on the same website, stock set of 7.3 injectors, and this is what it came up with. A full set of eight injectors for this truck will run you about $1,280. And this is not including labor and installation unless you're gonna do it yourself. I'm assuming that my fan base, most of them are gonna be the types of guys that are gonna try to figure it out and do it on their own. So these are the numbers I'm giving to you. Labor, if you take it to someone else, is gonna be very different this truck versus that truck. That truck, it might take somebody maybe two hours to install injectors. So let's just say they charge 100 bucks an hour. You're gonna be at $500 for them to do with the injectors if it's 250 for the set that you bring them and then it's two hours you know for the labor and a little change you've been about 500 bucks for that truck this truck you're gonna be in 1280 bucks just for the injectors no labor included and I want to say at a minimum it would take you probably twice as long to do the injectors in this truck as it would in that one. Another thing to think about is the glow plug system. The glow plug system on this truck is not that expensive and I haven't done a set on this truck yet, but from what I hear, it's not that hard to do other than sometimes you can run into C-step glow plugs not wanting to back out. But other than that, for the most part, apparently, the glow plug system itself is really not that hard to do on these trucks. Most of you guys could probably easily figure it out. I've had a few people tell me they're, they're really easy to do. You can do it pretty darn easy yourself. So, you know, I'm gonna assume that most of you guys can figure that out. In terms of that on either of these trucks, I don't really think you'd need to take it to the shop for glow plugs and relays but you know, that's just my guess. But that set for this truck is gonna run you between 250 and 280 bucks just for the glow plugs and the relay. And I believe that's new gaskets for your valve covers, about twice as expensive for the heating element. So now that we're done talking about maintenance and ease of use and my opinion on that kind of stuff, let's go into a topic that is also a very big one and that's which one's gonna hold up longer because you know, you've got this truck, it might have the greatest engine known to man, but is the truck gonna hold up to be able to outlast the engine? And that's where things get a little tricky. 
uh, because this truck ordinarily has a horrible lifespan versus these trucks over here, the Fords, they're all getting older, so a lot of them are pretty rusty now, but for the most part, these trucks, I seem to find them in a lot better condition, a lot easier than it is to find one of these in good condition, and I'm gonna talk about the areas that I'm talking about here. And another thing I'm gonna mention before the fact that I get into the whole uh, rust stuff is transmissions. People like to say, oh, well, you know, which truck's gonna have the better transmission? Everybody knows Dodge has a horrible transmission. Well, this truck has a stage five built transmission in it, so it's not really a great comparison. Uh, but both of these trucks are automatics. And generally speaking, these trucks are gonna have a better automatic transmission long-term compared to these. However, from what I understand, if you drive them on stock power for the most part, you can probably get about the same lifespan out of both of these trucks with a stock transmission if you properly care for them, flush fluids and stuff for the transmission, keep up with them and you're not, you know, doing a zero fuel plate in a giant injector on a stock trans, flooring it everywhere and wondering why your transmission's burning up. The trucks were not designed for that, therefore they don't really handle that very well. In the end, I'm not gonna be biased to the Dodge. I do believe that these trucks are gonna have a better transmission stock. That's just my opinion based on driving these trucks stock compared to the Dodges with a stock transmission. They just feel like wet paper going down the road, like they can't hold the power at all. These trucks at least feel like they're getting it to the tires a lot better. Therefore, I'm gonna give the Ford a better rating for a transmission. So when it comes to frames and bodies on these trucks and which one's gonna outlast the other, I've gotta say the Dodge trucks just don't seem to hold up. Now, they all are getting older now. These are you know 20 plus year old trucks. They're getting up there in age, and it's gonna be hard to find either of these in pristine condition, but from what I've been able to tell, especially with the frames on these trucks compared to these trucks, the second gen Dodges more specifically, not necessarily the first gens as much, but the second gen Dodges the most, I had to have looked at probably 150 trucks now in terms of all the trucks that I've looked through to buy the ones that I've bought. I've looked through tons of trucks, and the ones that have always blown me away by how bad their frames can be is the second gen Dodges. The second gen Dodges have a few places that are notorious for just rotting out very badly. One of those places is right along the fuel tank in between the frame on the outside and the fuel tank. If you look down that edge, put your hands up in there, be careful, but feel around. A lot of times they're just completely rotted out and sometimes there's no bottom section of frame on that portion of the truck. Same with up on the front end under where you would put a plow mount or right around where the bumper mounts up on the front of the truck in that general area up on the ends of the frame there. Notorious for rotting out. Same with on the inner portion of the tubular portion of that frame on either side of the drive shaft coming off the transmission. Very notorious for those inner side walls to be rusting out. I don't know why, they just do really bad. I've looked at a handful of OBS Fords and a handful that I looked at, I've bought. I've looked at three different OBS Fords ever and the three that I looked at I ended up buying and I can't say the same for second gen. For the three that I looked at, they look good in the pictures. I went and I looked at them. Frames were great, no like big chunks of rust falling off and no big holes anywhere, no nothing like that, no cracks. Second gens, I've looked at probably 40 or 50 second gens and I'm telling you what, most of those I did not buy because of frame rot or just horrible body bubbling all over the place. And I mean, I just don't understand it. They seem to just like want to fall apart. You guys know if you've looked at them, it, it is just hard to find a really, really solid second gen. I don't know why they're so bad compared to the Fords, but they just seem to be. And for that reason, I'm gonna give another point to the Ford because of the ability to hold up longer over the years, up here in the Midwest especially. It's just it's really disappointing how many of these trucks are just completely falling apart underneath. On my first diesel I ever bought, I didn't look at the frame because I had no idea. And ever since then, I've always done this first. I didn't look at the frame and there were three different spots on that frame that just had huge holes. And one of them was right up on the back side of an engine mount. And he had put you know chicken wire on the frame and putted it all up and bondoed it and all this other stuff so you couldn't see it. Huge, I mean, big enough to put your arm right through the hole in the frame. I mean, it was a big frame hole, it was really bad. And for our final category, we're gonna talk about reliability. This is a topic I like to talk about because I've been around a bunch of 7.3s and I've been around a lot of 12 valves and I gotta say, they're both extremely reliable trucks. You'd actually never know that I ever liked Fords with my videos now because I just film pretty much mostly 12 valve common stuff, fourth gens and whatever else, like mostly it's been 
you know, Cummins stuff. But growing up, there was never a Cummins around. It was always just Ford stuff. My mom had a Ford SUV for a little while there. My dad had a Ford 7.3, it was an O2, he bought it in 2004, and he drove that truck all the way up until 2014 when he bought a 6.7 Power Stroke. Again, he still stayed with Ford stuff, and this was actually the second Dodge he ever bought. He had a first gen that he bought, restored it, and just kind of sat it around, and we ended up giving that one away recently. So I bought it off him and gave it away, but for the most part, his daily driver trucks have always been a Ford. The Fords that I've been around, my dad's, it was a white 7.3, that truck had almost 300,000 miles on it when it was totaled out, but the engine still ran great. My sister hit some black ice put in the dead, they totaled out the truck. They gave him 14 grand for the freaking thing. For all those years, I think he replaced glow plugs, injectors, and the oil cooler. The three mechanical issue things I think he ever replaced on it, other than brakes a couple times. But other than that, that truck pretty much was problem free, and it was a great truck for all of those years. From personal experience, the 7.3s are super reliable trucks. They're amazing trucks. And a popular thing to do is when the, the 7.3 goes or a 6.0 motor blows or a 6.4, whatever, a popular thing to do is to put a 12 valve in it or some kind of Cummins engine in it just because they're super simple to work on and they fit in anything. So that must say something about the 12 valves. So the 12 valves are also super reliable trucks. You hardly actually, I don't think I've ever heard of somebody taking a power stroke motor and putting it in a Dodge. Maybe it's, it may have been done, somebody screwing around and having a good time, but I've never heard of that. And for that being said, with all the 12 valves that I've had, I've never had any catastrophic transmission failure ever. I've never had any catastrophic engine failure ever. I've never had that kind of an issue with one of these trucks. For reliability, man, I wanna say the 12 valve is probably the most iconic and the greatest diesel engine that was ever made just because of reliability and the simplicity of it. So it's hard to say, but I will tell you this. I don't think you could really go wrong with either of them. Both of these trucks are phenomenal trucks. They will run very well if you keep up with service and maintenance, they'll treat you right. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you. I don't see any real extreme downsides to either of them, other than maybe cost of parts and cost of labor if you're not one of those guys that like to do it yourself. Other than that though, I don't think you can go wrong either way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about it. And also, if you have not done so yet, we're giving away this truck plus $5,000 cash. So if you want to enter to win this 7.3 Power Stroke plus five grand, all you've got to do is this. Go to our website, lmpgear.com, buy anything you like on the store. You can buy a hat like this, a shirt like this. We sell socks and coats and freaking fireproof shop coveralls. We sell all kinds of stuff. So if you wanna get in on that, you can buy anything you like on the store. And as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. And I had somebody ask me, can I enter in multiple entry periods and will I still be able to get credit for all those entries? Yes, so if you order entries in the 20X entry period that we started off with or the 10X or the 5X or 1X or whatever, all those entries are added up to your total overall entries. Even if you get 20X here, 10X here, 5X here, and so on, all those entries get added up to one total number of entries. And so yes, you get credit for every order you place. There is one thing you need to keep in mind though. If you place orders for previous giveaways, that does not get you entered in for our current giveaways. You have to place an order once the new giveaways start to be entered into that giveaway. You know, we don't take entries from previous giveaways and go, oh, you're entered into the new one automatically. That's not how it works. So you do have to enter in on the current giveaway to get entries for it. So let me know down in the comment section below, guys, which truck do you think is the most reliable and why? and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.